If you're looking for the most amazing podcast ever, well, this isn't it. You're listening to the Average Fellas Podcast, guaranteed to let you down and leave you unsatisfied. <laughs> Hey, good morning, and welcome to another episode of the Average Fells Podcast. I'm your host, Zodi Zach, coming to you live all the way from Riverside, California, on another beautiful Monday morning. It could be Monday, it could be Wednesday, I don't know. If you guys have been paying attention to some of the banners that I've been posting, you're seeing Monday, Wednesday, Friday now. I'm preparing to roll into that schedule. Right now, it's just Monday, Thursday, but we're going to run into the Monday, Wednesday, Friday eventually. I'm building up some, uh, some, some, some leads for interviews. I'm starting to backstock a few, and it looks like we'll have some. Maybe we could do that by the end of the year, maybe December. Maybe I'll start rolling out with that schedule, but we'll get there. Um, I just want to say thank you to listeners, all you guys supporting the Average Fells podcast, sharing, liking, subscribing, all those things that counts. It really does a difference here on this podcast, especially when we feature small businesses, nonprofits, startups, freelancers. They need your guys' help. We need your help. I need your help. Um, and, and we would appreciate your guys' just subs- your ratings, your reviews, all those things. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening and participating with us here at the Average Fells Podcast. Okay, enough about me. I think I, I think I got through it. Uh, today's interview, I have a special guest uh, that that is going to be on the that's joining the call today. That uh, uh, it, you know, a series of 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 fortunate, not unfortunate, but a series of fortunate events has led to us being able to do this interview. We have a mutual friend, George, who I featured on the pad, podcast earlier. Um, I think I want to say two months ago. Um, Jay Levity, SoundCloud rapper, shout out to him. Uh, I, f- I featured him and a fellow his his friend listened to the podcast because he was on that episode. His friend reached out to me after discovering the podcast and said, hey, I'm an average fella. I think I have an extraordinary story. Let me see what's up. And he reached out to me. He sent me a, he sent me a message on my Instagram. And right away, I checked out his feed. And I, and I, I was blown away. I was thinking like, oh, my God, this guy's an adventurer. Like this, he's, he's not an average fella. What is he talking about? You know, but, uh, but, but after getting to you know, send a few messages and spend a little bit of time on the call before this interview, uh, you know, honestly, I couldn't be more, more excited to have this, this gentleman join the call. Uh, he's, he's, he's joining the call. And you know, he considers himself an average fella. But but he wants to inspire people to live an extraordinary life. And so without any further ado, uh, this morning, I'd like to bring on uh, my guest, Ariel E206. Is that how I say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's perfect. Good morning, Zach. Good morning, man. Good how are you? Man, yeah, no good, problem. Good. Thanks for thanks for joining the call, man. So how are you this morning? What's going on? I'm, I'm doing good, you know, enjoying a coffee. It, it, it's, uh, I've got some time off right now. No, uh, no fishing's going on. So, uh, I'm just, you know, enjoying my day. The early bird gets the worm. Hey, First of go. all, I want to say shout out to Jay Levity. Yep. Everybody go check him out. For sure. Exactly. Jay Levity, man. Check him out. I mean, it's a good stuff. He's actually he's actually got some really good stuff there. I'm not just saying that because he's my friend, but it's actually good. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, I, I tell him the same thing too, and and you know, it's like, oh dude, it's not just me being your friend. Like it's like, hey, you got some really good stuff actually. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So, hey, you know, I know, you know, we like to talk about the average fellow. I talk about George a lot. Uh, But tell me about yourself. Tell me, tell me about where you're from. Have you always lived, you know, from what I understand, it looks like you, maybe you're a man of the world from what I understand, but where are you from and where are you at now? You know, like, can you give me a little overview of that? Yeah, I, you know, I, I like to, I like to consider myself a gypsy or a nomad just because I'm like really everywhere all over the place all the time. Um, I'm originally from uh, your neck of the woods, uh, the Bay Area, uh, down in California, uh, San Jose, California. That's where I was born. Shout I, out I four was away, there. four away, go Sharks! Um, Woo! Yeah, <laughs> let's hope they make. It. Um, I, I, you know, I, I lived there when I until about I was like ten, and then, um, you know, uh, uh, life events pushed us up to uh, Washington, and and. Uh, I grew up out here. I've lived out here for years, and um, now I'm kind of just, you know, all over the place. Uh, going up in Alaska, uh, spending time off, and going down to Mexico, you know, being with family and things like that. Wow, man, that's <clears> awesome. <throat> so, you know, you, you mentioned you you live, you know, you moved up north towards Washington. Uh, so, has how did commercial fishing sort of, uh, uh, you know, show up on the radar for you? Because, you know, I don't think anybody just wakes up and is like, you know what, I'm going to go be a commercial fisher because that's, that's a tough job. That's a tough job, you know. 
It it is, and and I I never you know I never saw myself doing this. Never in a million years did I think that I would be a man of the sea or you know uh, <laughs> a dirty fisherman. <laughs> I never imagined it, but it was just you know it's it's weird how it happened. I was I was um, still in college. I I I, uh, I dropped out of college actually, and I, I I wasn't really like sure what I was doing. Had nowhere to go, and it's kind of just like stationary wasn't getting anywhere and um i decided to move to california and before i left one of my buddies uh said hey you want to come up and uh, work in alaska for the summer and make a quick buck and i was like well you know what why not right like i got nothing to lose and uh i went up and and uh i was working at a cannery as a matter of fact i was working at a cannery as a processor um the most monogamous work ever i mean it was, you know long hours it was it was just hell, and um, you were I did it. I didn't like it. It was a grind. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, th those. My respect to those guys that work yeah. in the canneries because that job is not easy. Yeah. Um, and uh, I got out there, and and you know, it wasn't it wasn't really the money or or anything that first enticed me after that first season in Alaska. It was, it was, you know. I'd, I'd look out at the boats on the dock and I'd, I'd see everything. I'd see these guys on deck working and I'm just like, man, I'm like, you know what? I want to try that. Like, I, that has to be where the money's at. That has to be what I, that, I need to do something like that, you know? And, and, um, it took me, you know, a couple seasons. It took me about a year to finally, um, become a real fisherman and actually get out on a boat and go out at sea and catch fish, you know? But, wow. um, it was, uh, <clears throat> I mean, it was unexpected. It was really unexpected, you know. And, and and I got out there and I did it, and I was just like, hey, you know what? Like, I actually like this, and it's like I'm actually good at this, and um, you know, it's just been it's been uphill from there. It's been an adventure ever since, huh? Yeah, it's just it's it's there's always something new. There's always something new. There's always something new to experience, something new to see, something new to do. Um, yeah, it, it, it's definitely. Definitely, you know. So, okay, so here, here's a question. Um, when you said that you were working in the cannery and then you would, you would look out and you'd see everybody on the docks, the ship's moving, there was like something taking place out there that was capturing your attention, your imagination, your desire was focusing towards that area. What, what Was there any practical steps that you took to actually go from, you know, this is a job that I have in a cannery to actually changing that and saying, I want to get on board that ship. Was there any prerequisite for you to have before you got on the ship or did you have to build a rapport with, with somebody to get on a boat? Well, I, I kind of, um, you know, so they, they, they call it uh, t taking the hoss pipe route and it's, it was really just, you know, just just working my way up from from you know the bottom um it, it, it was hard it was hard to find a job you know because uh boats you know boats typically like they want deck hands with experience and when you're somebody that has no experience it's like well how do i get on board to begin with and um it it, it took it took some time it took reaching out to people i i literally i swear to you i was um i was at a cannery or well, i was on a this was like my second season ever in Alaska, and I was, I went from working at a cannery to a floating processor, a catcher processor. It's a big vessel that goes out and fishes and processes all the all the fish on board. There's a factory, yeah. and I was working in the factory, and I'm just thinking, I'm like, man, I'm like, how can I get on deck? And I started, um, I hopped on Instagram. This is funny. I hopped on Instagram and I started looking up hashtags, Bering Sea Fisherman and wow. this and that. And I started hitting people up, sending messages. Hey, you know, I, I've got this experience and I've done this. I really want to get on deck, but I don't know who or how, what. And after about like sending, you know, messages to like 10 different people, one guy hits me back up and he says, hey, dude, yeah, I got you. He's like, this is... This is the uh, number for my boss. Call him. Tell him you're my friend. I don't even know this guy. Like I just met him online. Wow. He's like, tell him you're my friend, and you'll have a job. And I and I was, I was hired like the next week. You know, and I was like, okay, well, wow. You know, that was, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Wow. Uh, and really, from there, it was just you know putting in the work and grinding and proving myself to whether to the company or to the boat, to the captain, to the crews, and. Um, 
So, so you reached out, you physically went onto Instagram, searched up. I just want the listeners to hear this. Those of you guys who are out there, you know, trying to hustle, trying to make your way, trying to grind to that next level, find the next adventure in your life. It might take searching a hashtag. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I mean, it, it took, it took a hashtag to put him, to connect him to the right person to get him on board. That's how easy it is in 2020, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. That's how easy it is. So this podcast, like when I'm doing talking about small businesses, I'm sorry, I got I got to go here real quick. We're talking about these small business and stuff that can change a business's life. It could change a small business right now. Like I'm hashtagging, trying to highlight small businesses in Palm Springs, Riverside, Corona, Paris, these places. It could it could change your business dramatically if it if it were one hashtag away from being discovered, you know. So shout out to those of you guys who are on that grind right now. Anyways, let me get back to this. <laughs> back to this episode. <laughs> so some sometimes you just you just gotta try everything, man, and you just gotta you know, you just gotta do the do and and you know. Uh, uh, if you go put good things out, good things will come to you, you know? Yeah, man. I, that's, I mean, you reach out to me over Instagram here. You are adding, you know, some valuable content to the show just by reaching out over Instagram, man. You're doing more than you know already, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're expiring a lot of people with your Instagram feed. I go on your Instagram feed. I'm like, wow, this guy is cool, man. Like I, <laughs> I'm literally like to go out on my experience as a fish as being on a boat is, you know, freshwater fish small 15 foot boat like is the is the biggest thing i've ever been on never gone out into the ocean well i've been on cruises but like that you can't really relate that to anything you know mm -hmm. so yeah. um but like you know to see your feet and you know my my experience with you know commercial fishing is uh you know the discovery channel and so i'm sure you get that a lot like oh so what do you do catch crab you know like deadliest catch yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are, are there some of those are what are some of those what are some of those uh I guess typical responses that you might get as a commercial fisherman when people start talking about, you know, oh, you commercial mm -hmm. fish, you know? Yeah, you, you know, that, that's usually, um, that's usually like the very first thing that pops up when I tell people that I'm a fisherman. I'm like, oh, deadliest catch. Like, I'm like, yes and no. You know, <laughs> you, know you, you gotta think about it. That, that show is all about like Hollywood. You know, they like, they dramatize stuff insane it's insane and and you know the, not to say that like you know the things that they portray on the show i'm not saying that they're not real but you know, sometimes they like add a little bit of a spice to that a little reality um, yeah so you know people people are like oh my god like you know you're out there catching crab and this and that i'm like no it's, it's not just crab there's all sorts of other fish and there's also all sorts of other things that are done out there um wow yeah yeah so um what's a typical day you know so those of us who have this hollywood expectation of, of commercial fishing you know i want to ask you the questions that you know might expose or really connect us what a real experience is like so could you tell me what a typical day is from start to finish um you know like are you out on the water or do you even board the boat sometimes like can you give me a mm -hmm. typical day for a commercial fisherman well so so from the moment i sign my contract and head out to alaska um i i i get there and it's straight to the boat and you know my life is the boat and every day it's the boat 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 you know um you know rarely ever do we get to um like stay off the boat you know um i mean our living quarters are on there it's you know we've got all the accommodations we need so we're always on board <clears throat> um what does the day average day look like it you know it really depends what we're doing are we out fishing are we are we uh tied up in town waiting for our turn to go fish um me me being uh, the greenhorn is is what they call us uh new guys uh me being a greenhorn i have to cook you know i cook for the crew so i you know my 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 days start very early i'm usually up before everybody else and cooking breakfast for the crew um you know, and our, and, our, and our day begins like that. You know, there's always, we've always got projects on the boat that, that's being done. Um, if we're out fishing, um, it's, you know, it could be pretty, you know, we're out, we're out working on deck. And then, you know, me, I, I have to, I have to be able to find time in between to go and uh, prep for lunch or something, or maybe get dinner going if, if, you know, um, <clears throat> it's around those times. But, um, it's uh, you know, there's 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 not a lot there, there's a lot of downtime, but then there's not a lot of downtime as well either. Like again, like I said, there's always something to do. You know, there's always something that needs to be done, and um, you know, you you're kind of working from the moment that you get up to the moment that you go to bed. Um, 
so so you talk about like you you know you being the greenhorn there's certain responsibilities like cooking cooking for the cooking for the the crew that's there um mm-hmm. so what would be the next what would be like the next level up from the greenhorn like can you kind of work through that a little bit uh for the average fellow out there like who wants to know what the hierarchy on a boat looks like yeah yeah so you know t- typically about like after like maybe you've got like a couple years two years under your belt like you kind of lose that title of greenhorn now it's kind of like okay you know this guy knows what he's doing uh, he knows his way around the boat. He knows how to, you know, knows how to get things done on the boat. Um, you know, uh, every every you know we're all deck hands on the boat. Um, you'll have you'll have your deck hands, and then you'll have the deck boss who runs the deck. When we're out, you know, when we're out on deck fishing or whatever, when we're out there working. Um, after that comes the engineer, and uh, you know, the engineer's job is like most important job i mean <laughs> you know they, they really do keep the the nuts and bolts running you know yeah and um and then comes the uh first mate if there is a first mate which would be the second captain or the relief skipper so on the boat you know we don't, we don't say captain we say skipper we call our captain skipper um and then uh and then yeah and then at the top is obviously the captain um it's uh it's it's you know it's a uh, nobody's really above anybody ever you yeah. know um, it's it's really a team effort everybody really works together and and you know this job can't be done without him and this job also can't be done without me and it's it's just you know everybody everybody holds their weight yeah everybody has um, to you I mean like if you talk mm-hmm. about having an engineer on board and you know his job is to keep the boat moving you know keep it everything Mm -hmm. keep the nuts and bolts together you know you guys are sourcing the product that the boat is out there for you know so it all Mm -hmm. works in a sort of all works in some you know you need the team to get the job done and it's commercial fishing i never even thought about that i never considered calling the guy on boat on the boat an engineer now that you're saying that it makes total sense like um this is very like uh man if you if you I don't know. I'm I'm a bit of a nerd, so I think about Star Wars. I would think that on on, uh-huh. on in Star Wars, you need a few of those engineers. You need a few of those guys, you know. So yeah. like, yeah. that's like a you need a few of those guys. <laughs> and then there's the dudes that carry out the job. You know, there's the rest of the guys, the rest of the dudes on the crew. You know, I always think I don't know. To me, I guess like smugglers, like from Star Wars, remind me a little bit of that sea sort of that sort of grit yeah. that, that, that is that I guess the, the adventurous spirit of a, of, of a commercial fisherman, maybe who knows? I, yeah, I don't know. Definitely. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that, but it just, it just, it just <laughs> connected two dots right now. Um, so tell me what, what is, do you, um, what is your favorite thing about fishing? Do you actually have like a, you know, a, a, actually enjoy fishing because every time I turn around, there's always like some dude who's like, Oh God, I got to go get this fish. And like, you know, <laughs> men fantasize and they romanticize fishing a little much sometimes. So I don't know. Well, I, I, I definitely fantasize about catching fish because when we catch fish, that means we're making the moolah, you know, you're so, making money. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> You know, do I enjoy it? Yeah, I do. You know, I, I've got to say, I, I've, you know, I've found something that I never thought I would find. I mean, I, you know, again, like I said, like none of this was planned. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't wake up one day. Was like, I'm gonna go be a fisherman. Like, no, it was just like it just happened, and it just so happened to like coincide so much with me, the work and everything that comes with it. You know, yeah. and it was like, like I was meant for that. Um, I was built for it, really. You know. Um, I, I, I enjoy it a lot. There's times where, you know, it, it gets rough, you know, it gets rough. It, it, it sucks being away f- uh, from family for so long, from life for yeah. so long, because it's like you know, your life kind of like is at a, at a standby because, you know, I'm, 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 I'm like going away for X amount of time and I'm just dedicating myself to that, you know. Um, so, yeah, that, you know, that I'd, I'd say that's like um, that's like the downside to it. But uh, aside from that, I, I I don't see myself, I don't see myself doing anything else for a while. <laughs> so, um, 
there so you know talk about like the you said you know when you're fishing and when you're catching stuff you're looking at you know to you guys it's your livelihood it's the dollar bills in your pocket that you guys are looking at when you're catching fish um it's so what's the can you talk to me maybe about like the adrenaline rush maybe like when fish cuz i don't you know when i go fishing and when everybody starts catching fish everybody's like fish on and everybody gets all excited and stuff and everybody <laughs> starts you know like trying to find their spot all of a sudden and um, so maybe like on, a, so for you, commercial fishing, what's that look like when you guys start catching fish, you start bringing fish in, what does that sort of process look like? Um, you know, uh-huh. you know, what's, what's going through everybody's mind while well, th- that's happening? Well, the, the, um, I'd say the adrenaline rush comes when you're hauling in the net and, and you start seeing, uh, it's, it's really hard to put it into words, um, to kind of try to visualize what I'm about to explain to you, but just imagine that uh, this this net that you're hauling in, it's it's a giant sausage just flowing through the water with 135 tons of fish. I mean, in one haul, you know, wow. and, and seeing that, it's like, whoa, you know, uh, the math that went into designing these methods of fishing and, and, and everything behind it is just, it's like, it's mind blowing. It's mind boggling. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Yeah. When we're out there on deck and, and, and we're hauling the net in and we're bringing in fish, it's like, Holy crap. Like, yeah, this is it, you know? Yeah. Uh, just to see all that. I mean, it's, you know, it, it brings a rush. It brings a rush. It's, it's exhilarating. It's fun. Have you seen, okay, so have what have you seen some things? Have you guys, like, brought in something that you were like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yes. I've seen, like, blob. Uh, there's, like, uh, I've seen blob fishes that, like, I didn't, I didn't know they were real. I remember seeing them around on the internet, and, like, they're literally, like, these blobs with a face on it, and yeah. it's a fish. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck, like, <laughs> Drag it up from the bottom of the ocean, you know. Somehow got caught in the net. But... Some old. It looks like some old ass man, right? Doesn't it? The face on this <laughs> yes. fish does. Yeah. The face is all droopy. And oh it's, gosh. It's, you know. Yeah, I, I've I've seen some. I, you know, I've seen. Uh, we've had sharks come up in the net. Ooh. Um, you know, one time uh, we we had a shark. We had a shark come up in the net, and um, it got caught on the net, so it wasn't falling into the tank, which was good because we really didn't want it to fall in the tank. Um, I was the youngest guy on deck. All you know, all my all my colleagues were much older than me. Um, but they're like, uh, they told me, uh, jump in there and grab it. I said, what? There's a shark in there and it's still moving and it's like <laughs> kicking and swinging and I'm just like, you know, they're passing me a line to wrap on his tail so that we can hook him up to the crane and and swing him off and he's like, you know reaching for me i'm like whoa okay yeah <laughs> wow yeah there's, yeah the, the, the stuff we pull up sometimes is it's crazy i've um we pull up a lot of trash sadly oh man. sadly to say i mean you know there's there's uh and our oceans are are just getting destroyed they yeah. are getting destroyed you know and, and like i've <laughs> i've pulled up trash from like across across the globe you know from like wow. japan and stuff like you know all the way in alaska wow um, yeah That's... definitely so um speaking about pulling up trash and stuff i was going to ask you what you know you're now that you've been out on a commercial b- vessel do you how often do you come in co- do you ever come in contact with international uh other international crews or people from other countries other boats like that um yeah you know uh uh the Bering Sea is like right there by like Russian waters you mm-hmm. know so uh yeah th- you know there's been times where we're out at sea and there's uh uh you know we could see like Russian vessels and uh we have a lot of uh we have a lot of uh, uh fishing boats that come from Japan as well too they go on fishing Alaskan waters uh so you know we're constantly bumping into those guys um we never really have anything to do with them but uh you know they're out there alongside with us. So, but have you heard of like any stories? Um, I mean, what's because you know I was listening to this one pod- podcast and they were talking about how um, modern day 
pirate ships were taking place in certain parts of the world. So my question mm-hmm. is, you know, you're on a you're on a vessel, you're out there on out, you're doing a job, a commercial fishing job. You know, I'm sure there's protocols that keeps you know who's on that boat and who knows what's going on that. But especially if you're an Amer- fishing out of an American company. I'm sure there's a lot of protocols you guys follow that the rest of the world doesn't. So my, you know, my question, I guess, is like, what does the safety look like? What is the, what is the, do you ever, do you ever consider like what the, um, you know, what the, the safety situation might be being out on international waters? Um, if you, you know, uh, huh. yeah, well, you know, we, we never really, um, we never really tread out, uh, too far into, you know, uh, uh, out of U S waters, but, um, you know, uh, uh, thankfully, yeah, you know, we are we are in the U.S. and it is, you know, it's very protected here and it's very safe. And no, we don't have, you know, we don't have uh, uh, pirates that come. Uh, I, I've heard plenty of stories. I, I've worked with people that have sailed the seven seas and yeah. they've been boarded by Somalian pirates and have been held for ransom. And there's like, there's crazy stuff that goes on out at sea, uh, stuff that goes on, on uh, uh, unaccounted for, unsolved, you know, um, uh, there's there's a lot of bad stuff out there, uh, but you know, thankfully for us, I mean, we, we're in a very safe place, and none of that yeah. goes on here. I mean, obviously, it's a very regulated situation that you're in. You know, it's a commercial fishing vessel from the U.S., so it's yeah, yeah, very, was, regulated. very regulated, very <laughs> regulated, um, very regulated. Um, so speaking of like these these fishing tales, uh, you you mentioned like sometimes these people hear you know they these crazy stories I hear. Um, what have you, what was one of the most interesting, maybe fishing tales that you've ever come across? Or is that like a thing is, so here's, I imagine this, I imagine after a long, you know, season or whatever, you guys come off, you know, get to the, get to the docks and everybody heads to the local, you know, the, the local brewery or whatever to grab a few <laughs> pints. I, is, yeah. that, is that, is that, is that a, is that a, is that a, is that, a, is that far off from reality or do you, you guys? No, 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 you're, you're, you're dead on. Yeah. You're right on there. <laughs> Yeah, but pre-COVID, before COVID, that was a that was a, a ritual. You know? Yeah, you get to town, you offload, you, you you go hit the Norwegian Rat Bar or the or the Unice Bar, and you know have some drinks and you know talk about how the trip went. Exactly. Definitely. So, it, it, speaking of, so in that one of those experiences, because you know, for me as a podcast, I'm imagining this like, oh man, I just came in, mm-hmm. just unloaded. I'm in the tavern, I'm in the local bar, I'm drinking my pint, and you know, these dudes who are out on sea, for God knows how many more years in mind. They have white beards, they're older gentlemen, and they have tails. Like, what <laughs> have you heard any good stories like in those sorts of settings? Oh man, yeah, there's, uh, to, to you know. This this is uh it's pretty funny because my captains you know they always all tend to have like the craziest stories you know and they'll have stories for days that they could just you know that they just tell on and on and they say they'll tell them over and over again and they never they never get old um ah uh, but I mean you know I, I mean you know as far as a fishing tale goes. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's you know, it's pretty, uh, everybody kind of shares the same experiences out there, being out at sea. Um, there's not much that the next guy is doing that I didn't just do like them, you know, out there. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you know, I don't know, I can't really think of any kind of uh, tales, I mean. No, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's I, I, I mean, you probably hear, like you said, you, I imagine, like, you know, the fishing tale in the in the commercial fisherman community it's probably been heard a hundred times you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the same story a hundred different ways is it you know like it's the one that got away you know that the yeah. uh, the white whale speaking yeah. of, speaking of white whales um you know i i did checking your feed i did see you pull up some huge just some huge fish. What what kind of fish are you actually like? What is it that you are fishing? Give me a season, sort of like what that looks like as a fisherman. Are you mm-hmm. looking for certain fish certain times of the year? What does that look like? Yeah, it it, it really depends what um, um, what boat you're on, what you know, what what the season is, and you know, uh, we've uh, I've, I'm up here in Seattle right now in the Puget Sound fishing for salmon. Um, over the summer, I was in southeast Alaska fishing for salmon, and uh, before that, I was in the Bering Sea fishing pollock. Um, there's 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 tons of fisheries out there. Um, I I tend to just stick 
mainly to the Pollock fishery. Um, that's what I know. That's what I want to do. That's that's where I know that I can make decent money. Um, <clears throat> um, there's a uh, yeah. There's just you know there, there's there's a uh, there's all sorts of different seasons that are out there, and and it just it, it depends on what kind of fisherman you are. You know, some people only fish salmon, and they'll only go up and be a commercial fisherman over the summer, uh, three months out of the year. You know, or uh, there's other guys like me that are up there full time, and they're you know they're in all sorts of different fisheries, uh, going from from one boat to the other, back to back contracts and stuff. Um, for for me, I'd say Pollock has probably been the most lucrative. Um, crab crab fishing in Alaska used to be uh, a really big deal. It still is a really big deal. So. But, um, so are, would you consider yourself more like a freelancer because you're doing contract, individual contract, like you're hiring me as an individual person to go on that boat to fulfill this, this duty? Yeah, yeah, you could say that. You, you could say that. I mean, I, I technically I'm self-employed in the eyes of the government. I'm, I'm self-employed. Um, so, yeah, yeah, you could say that, um, you know, I'm a freelancer and, and, you know, any any boat that you get on, they're always like, you know, they'll they'll always like pay you differently based on like your experience as well too, and what you've done, what you fish for, how much you know, how much yeah. you've been doing it, etc. So, so I guess this is another question too. Then, um, is there like a is there, you know, is every boat like that, or is there like a union maybe for commercial fishermen um, that commercial fishermen could be a part of, or like is there like a you know anything like that since you guys are they, basically hiring you know like you talking about solo contracts i mean mm -hmm. they they did um you know I, I know that they did start a uh, fisherman's union here in seattle years ago I, although I, I heard it's a joke i heard it's really like not you know they don't really do anything for for the fishermen so um you know they, they have that but uh, you know most people don't really you know, join that union. It's, right. it was, it was a failed attempt. It was a failed attempt. So, you know, when, it, so when you, you know, somebody who is an experienced, um, experienced commercial fisherman, um, their resume has, you know, so many seasons doing this type of fishing on it. So many seasons doing this type of fishing on it. And, you know, say, I guess my question is how, what would you, what would you, um, what would you say to the person who is maybe looking at, you know, looking at wanting to be a commercial fisherman? How would you, how would you go about advising them to find work um, as mm -hmm. a freelancer? Because it sounds like you're shopping yourself out to these different boats. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you know, I, I've I've always told people I I get a lot of people that hit me up all the time friends people that I haven't talked to in years and they're like hey I know you're fishing like you know can you give me a job and this and that and um you know it's it's not always um it's just it's, it's not always that easy to just be like oh yeah hey bro come on board you know like no experience required no it, you know it's um I like I said I I started from the very bottom and like worked you know found my way up but you know there was definitely like you know uh other uh resources or avenues that i could have taken that i didn't know about before then that would have made it a lot easier for me to acquire the job that i'm at now but i just i didn't know these things back then when i was first starting um you know there, there's there's uh there's Facebook pages, you know, Craigslist ads. I mean, people are constantly, there's companies constantly, constantly looking for people, whether it's on a, whether it's on a, a, a catcher processor that's, you know, fishing and processing at the same time and they need people to work in the factory, you know, I mean, it's, um, it's a great place to start. It, it, it gives you, it gets your foot in the door really, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it kind of just exposes you to the environment and you start meeting people. I mean, you know, from the moment from the moment that I got on a boat, I mean, I just started meeting people left and right. You know, I mean, you're networking like crazy with all these other people, and yeah, and um, you know, like once once you're in, you're kind of in, you know, and and it, it it doesn't get as hard to really find work because of, you know, people will know you or people may have heard of, of you or or they know somebody that you know or, you know, all those things. Um, <clears throat> But you know, uh, um, 
anybody out there that, that's you know interested in doing it and wanting to do it i mean just definitely like again do do those things that you don't think are going to work like looking up those hashtags and and hitting people up on instagram you know i mean you never know you just you never know who's out there um that, that's going to be willing to give you a hand right um but yeah I, 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 the thing is too i mean there's you know they need people constantly they need young people that are willing to work and and have good work ethic and and you know won't mentally break easily um you know so yeah there's there's you know there's uh there's a uh, there's always a shortage you could say of of you know good workers that companies are looking for you know and and um <clears throat> yeah so there's there's that going for you you know if if, uh, if you know how to hustle if you know how to grind i mean you you already you're already halfway there so it's that. So that's what I was. That's what I was going to. I want to kind of talk about that a little bit. So, it seems like the the barrier to entry is it's not high, but the other side of that, once you get in, your experience is valuable instantly. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like it's the people who want you to be like. So the captain who's hiring you the experience that you that you will get on the boat is valuable instantly because you basically said once you got on a season or two you know it your your networking your your ability to find work increased because now you're that much more experienced than the guy below you right mm-hmm. and the change between not knowing and knowing makes you that much more valuable in this industry. And you talk about, and I think it's, you know, you said you need to have a good work ethic and you, you know, people who can't, can't snap, they have to have to be strong mentally to have this sort of job. And it's, it, to me, it looks like, it sounds like that, you know, like, I don't Mm -hmm. know if I could do that out on the boat for maybe as long. I don't know what a season, how long is a typical season for you guys out on the water? Usually about, I mean, the, the season will last contracts about, Three months. Typically. Three months. Yeah. So, so, you know, what on the other side of that, the captain has to think too, has to look at, okay, you might have the experience, but also now you have to think about the mental capacity. Are they mm-hmm. healthy enough to be on here as a human? Because the last thing you yeah. need to be so many miles out at sea and somebody, you know, somebody have a breakdown or somebody, something yeah. go wrong, something, yeah. you know, humans are humans. We all mm-hmm. somehow something can happen, you know, anything, a number of things can happen. So, you know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at this, you know, I always hear these stories that this job is like, people are like, oh my gosh, like it's, you know, the, the stories that we get from discovery channels that people are making money hand over fist, but the reality is the hard work, you know, and the risks that you have to take into consideration being out there in this industry, mm-hmm. it's not like, it's not like you just, you're not just, you know, passing by somebody flipping a burger or, you know, putting lettuce on a burger. You, yeah. there's there's heavy machinery moving around machinery mm-hmm. that can take your arm clear off in an instant you can yes. fall you know maybe <laughs> yes. you can t- can you talk about some of the risks that you have to consider because i'm talking about a low barrier entry as far as like they need people that are dedicated to this job mm-hmm. and that are mentally and physically fit to capable. do this job capable to do yes. this job so it's exactly. it might be a low barrier to entry but they won't take everybody you're mm-hmm. not everybody's going to be taken so no that's the that's what i'm saying that's what i'm trying to get to yeah. And can yeah. you talk about that a little bit? Talk about, you know, maybe talk about that. Talk about that risk that people need to take in consideration. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a little more of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, I, I want to, I want to, I want to, uh, uh, say something on this real quick. Uh, you know, people, people usually like, you know, they're like, oh, you're up there in Alaska fishing. Like, oh, you make money or this and that. And it's like, yeah, you know, pe- people see that, but they, you know, they don't see, the sacrifices they don't see the risks they don't see you know the, the days and days of work and 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 you know sleepless nights and all that stuff you know no, nobody really sees that and, and nobody really understands it until they get there and they're like whoa wait like this is what it is like yeah you know it's a dangerous job it is it's, it's very dangerous at any given moment anything can go wrong you know a, a, a line on the winch snaps or, or you know I've I've been uh, I've been moving hooks from from the bag, and then there's this other hook right here in front of me, and it snaps, and there's like a hundred tons of pressure on there, just snapping by my head. It, it's insane, you know. It's like something like that could like decapitate decapitate you, you yeah. know. So yeah, there's like you know there's like there's really dangerous stuff, you know. I mean, 
uh, talk about hitting shitty weather, you know. I mean, I, I New Year's Eve, like, uh, uh, it was insane. I never, I never witnessed uh, weather like that before, and um, and, and a boat actually sank that night. Uh, wow! Unfortunately, the Scandies rose. This was New Year's Eve. We hit a storm. It, I mean, it was blowing like 45, 50 miles an hour. I mean, there was like 35 foot seas, and wow. it was just. It, I, I have one of the videos on my feed. I, I'll uh, I'll send it to you later so you can look at it. But um, you know, things like that, man. I mean, you know. You, you got to be able to look at that wave and be like, whoa, are we going to be okay? Like, yeah, yeah we're going to be okay. We're going to get through this, you know? Um, Dude, that's a soundbite. People... I'm using that. I'm using... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. People people see that stuff and they start to freak out, you know, and then it's like and, – and, and then they start to really think like, oh, my God, like maybe I, I should have reconsidered this, you know? And, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's – um, it's definitely not for the faint of heart, you know, like, like, uh, it is kind of like the wild west, you yeah. know, out there in, in Alaska, in the Bering Sea, you know, it's, uh, 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 you gotta be rough neck and like, you know, tough skin and stuff. Um, cause yeah, that you, you'll, you'll be, you'll get in situations where, um, yeah, you will be scared and, and you will be like, Oh my God, that was close. Like I almost lost my hand or I almost lost my finger or something, you know, or, uh, definitely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there's, it, so it's it, because like my first, my first thing I think about d commercial fishing, you know, I'm, I'm thinking like, there's a chance I'm probably going to fall overboard. You know, if I was ever going to do it, you know, and I, I thought about it, I never really seriously considered ever making a, you know, a pilgrimage up there to, <laughs> to go be a fisherman. Right. But, you know, you being obviously being exposed, I keep falling back on the discovery channel. How average of a fella am I? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, from my perspective, from what I've been watching, what I've watched on discovery channel my entire life and what I've, um, what I've heard my dad, my dad, used to grow up fishing out at sea with his dad. So, um, he has some experience with that. Not, not, I don't, but he does. And, um, you know, some of his, some of his, his, uh, his stories and what I see on TV, I'm thinking, man, I would never, I could never do that. And you know, that's why I'm a podcaster. That's why I want to be a podcaster. Cause it, I'll talk to this. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to the guy who does that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I know. But I that's do. where it'll stay. It'll stay there, you know, <laughs> with him. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, it's, it's just, you know, I'm hearing these crazy, these crazy stories, stuff that you've had to experience, you know, uh, like I said, Hey guys, if you, his Instagram names in the, in, in on the title there, check out his feed on Instagram. I mean, super interesting, uh, just adventurous life that you've been living out here, man, uh, out at sea. Um, can you tell, can you tell me maybe one of the most beautiful things in nature that you've ever witnessed out in the water? I've, I've got to say off tops, man, the whales, the whales, nothing beats the whales. It, it's, you know, seeing a massive creature like that out there in the middle of the ocean. I mean, it's just, it, it's one of the most beautiful things you could see. I, I see, I see all sorts of, uh, um, uh, wildlife you could say out there. I mean, you know, there's, there's sea lions, seals, walruses, all sorts of different whales, uh, porpoises, you know, porpoises are really cool. They, they like to, um, they like to ride our bow. Uh, oh, so wow. the bow of the, the bow of the ship, like as we're treading water, they'll like, crisscross our bow and they're jumping up you know up and out of the water and seeing cool stuff like that you know i mean th these are like these are the th like those are the types of things that you know some people will go to an agency and pay for to go out on an excursion right to go yeah. see something like this you know and and i and i get to i get to just do this on i get to do it on a regular basis because yeah. it's my job you know going out there and, and seeing seeing life out there and it's, it's just it, it's a beautiful thing um you know when, and when you're out there in the ocean and you look all around you 360 degrees and you see nothing but water i mean that that in itself is you know it, it's a different feeling it's a different feeling because i mean us in nature i mean we're, we're meant for land you know yeah like all we know is land and you know it's like you, you're kind of out there and you're like oh well you know this is a little different, um, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so d- definitely. I mean, I, I I love that. You know, that's that's probably like one of the best feelings out there is is just you know being like so in tune with. I mean, not not really. I don't want to say in tune with nature, but you know, being a part of nature out there. You know, yeah. what, even though we're out there killing fish and stuff, right? I mean, yeah, it's sad thing, but we got to feed the world. Um, but uh. Yeah, yeah, it's it's you know, there's, there's a lot of beautiful stuff out there. That's awesome, man. Hey, I want to I want to ask you too. So, um, you said uh, go sharks. <laughs> Speaking of sharks, I <laughs> this is a, it, maybe this is an interesting fact. I don't know if you noticed this since you're out here in this this side of the world fishing out in this side of the world, but um, not everywhere in the world, you know, do people get to see great whites or even be in the area of great whites. And here off the California coast, going all the way up to the Bering Sea, I believe. That's a great white territory. That's for, that's where great whites are from. Like that's where people, mm-hmm. and I th- think people put that two and two together. Um, simple question: Have you ever seen a great white shark? Uh, sadly, no. I, I'm waiting for the day to to see one just jumping out of the water, yeah. getting that seal or something. You know, I mean, that'd be that'd be pretty, that'd be badass. I've swam with sharks, so I like you know when I when I uh, when I vacation and stuff, I go back home down to Cancun. I I. It's funny because I, I spend my life at water, you know. I'm constantly by the ocean. Uh, I'm a big scuba diver, so, I, you know, I, I've gone down and, and seen the water from, like, different eyes, you know. And I've, yeah. I've, like, swam next to sharks, uh, which was a very scary feeling at first, you know. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't too comfortable because, you know, you see a shark, you're like, whoa, yeah. there's that stigma behind it, right, that they're, like, going to get you in jaws and but they're not really like that, you know. I mean, they're they're pretty cool creatures. I know it's it, the, uh, sharks are amazing creatures, man. I lo- I mean, obviously, I'm a huge San Jose Sharks fan, but I mean, just the one of the first creatures I could draw freehand was a shark because of its just cool shape. It just has mm-hmm. this super dynamic shape to it, right? And a, a beautiful, beautiful fish, right? One of the funny things I think about sharks that people don't take into consideration is what noise does a shark make? <laughs> I, <laughs> You're gonna think about it now. You're gonna think. <laughs> is it? Does it sound like a chihuahua, or is it like a, more of like a pit bull? Or exactly. A louder, like... Is it a bear or something? I have no idea. Yeah. And if you go back and you watch Jaws, I don't know if you ever see. You go back and you, if you just mute, if you just mute, like mute the TV, and you see the shark pulls head out of the water and it's just like splashing around. <laughs> You then to get the picture. Wait a second. They made a scary movie about an animal that doesn't make any noise. It doesn't like yeah. actually growl. It doesn't make. It just opens its mouth at you. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so true. <laughs> that's funny. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah. Hey, so um, we're getting about. We're getting close to close to an hour here, and. Uh, I have a few last questions before we sign off. Um, mm-hmm. um, I asked my dad, I called my dad up. I said, Hey, um, dad, I know you have some experience fishing out there on the water. I'm going to have this interview with the commercial fisherman who fishes out, uh, out in, in, out in Alaska. Is there anything you want me to ask him? And he said, ask him what kind of fishing rig he uses. What is his test line and what kind of bait he uses? Okay. Um, so I, I work on a, um, it's called a trawler or they're also known as draggers. As well, um, a trawl net. Um, I mean, I, I, how do I explain this? I guess we don't use bait, so we don't have to use bait. We're um, the fish that we fish for. Typically, they're in like giant schools. You know, I mean, there will be like thousands and thousands and thousands thousands of them within the close proximity of each other. You know, so we don't ever actually have to bait them. Um, but uh, you know. The, the way the way that the the trawler systems set up is uh, we we set our net and literally the boat just does the work just scoops up the fish we'll just we'll drag it or, or we'll tow it behind us and um, the te- technology is so amazing nowadays I mean you know there's fish finders and, and depth sounds all so all that stuff I mean it, it all comes into play and uh, really I mean you just sit up in the wheelhouse and, and fish from there you know um, yeah, so um, <clears throat> the, definitely, um, you know, the the methods used to you know acquire the fish is you know, it's pretty extraordinary. It's it's really interesting the way that everything works. 
So uh, you mentioned a entire, I guess, floating facility that processes, catches, processes, and like packages. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Can you can you talk about that real quick before you know? I I just I'm remembering it now, and I wanted mm-hmm. to bring it up. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the catcher processors, um, the the those are typically trawlers as well. They you know same style of fishing. They set their net, they drag, they tow it, and then um, they dump the fish into the tanks, and the tanks lead down to the factory, and and then from there it goes through everything. You know, it runs onto these conveyor belts and. Um, you know, there will be like, you know, the, the catch a processor that I worked on in the past. I mean, it was like, you know, 120 people on board, wow. you know, I mean, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a ship. It was a big ship. It was a 300 foot ship. And, wow. you know, it was, it was a giant floating piece of metal, you know, that had a factory in it, it had living wow. quarters it had everything. I wonder um, who owned that. I wonder, was it, I wonder the guy. The person who owned that ship. Wow! That wow. <laughs> yeah, talk about dollars talk about and big bucks. Yeah, man. talk about dollars and cents on that one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's 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 um it's a very lucrative industry, you know, and, and anybody that's uh, uh trying to get into it and, and thinks that they're up for it, I say give it a shot, you know, and um you got nothing to lose, and 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 everybody typically goes up there for their Alaskan adventure. That's usually what it ends up being for most people up there. Uh, my adventure just so happened to uh, become a uh, permanent one. <laughs> hey, man! If you could live life as an adventure every day, I'd say go for it, man. Definitely. And go for it. Hey, um, anything before we sign off, man? Anything you want to shout out? Uh, maybe shout out your Instagram handles. Um, or your social media handles if you want people to get connected, check out your feed. Um, mm-hmm. Anybody you want to shout out, now's your opportunity, man. Uh, yeah, I am, I'm going to shout out my uh, my brother, uh, Damien. He's, he's, uh, go check out his page. It's called Vibras Visual. And um, it's, uh, we, we just started. Uh, we, he, just, he bought a drone and he bought some camera gear. And uh, we started making videos down there in Mexico of, like, our, of our vacations and stuff. And... Um, it's, it's actually, he's actually really good and he's like putting some really good content out and putting together some really, really nice videos of our adventures out there. And, uh, it's just, you know, it's just something that he's doing for fun. Um, he's not really trying to monetize off of it. He just, he does it because he's, uh, you know, he loves it. He's interested in it. Um, and, uh, you know. I mean, there's there's so much there's so much good stuff to see out there in Cancun, and we kind of want to we're, we're making these videos and everything so that we can put it out there for people to see, and you know, for our friends to see and the family to see and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, shout out to Vibras Visuals. Uh, go check the page out. Go check out our videos and our adventures in Cancun. That's that's my shout out. Sweet man, awesome. Hey, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, I really appreciate you sharing your story, sharing sharing your experience as a commercial fisherman in Alaska and your journey through that, man. It's inspiring. And um, like I said, if if you know if I could inspire anybody to live an adventure every day, I, I you know, I just want to say uh, go do it. Go do it. Go chase your adventure, chase your dream. Hey, once again, guys, I want to appreciate you guys for listening, downloading, liking, subscribing, all those things here on the Average Fells Podcast. Once again, your guys' participation helps. It helps the, the small businesses, the freelancers, the, the independent artists, the people who, the average person who is doing something extraordinary. That's who we highlight, and all of your participation helps. So once again, guys, thank you so much for being here and listening to the Average Fells Podcast. I'm your host, Zach. Peace and love.